Hello, this is Warlord. Today we're going to take a look at using Pass to make a simple chase scene. And we're going to let Pass do all the hard work for us. So let's go ahead and get started. Now any type of road will work, but so we don't have to look through buildings. I mean, for the purpose of clarity, I'm just using uh, Overpass 7 from Volume 1, Roadways Volume 1, Real Illusion. And this is an elevated roadway the way I have it set up. It's not on the ground plane. So that can cause us some problems when we go to add our path. So I'm going to go to Create Path, and the problem is I can't find the roadway. I might be able to come in here and turn the camera to where eventually I'll find the roadway. But the easiest way to handle this is to select the roadway or the property it's a part of, right-click, add it to the terrain. Now when we go into Animation and Path to create our path, as long as we place the marker on top of it, It'll stay on the path. Now you'll notice if I go off of it, the path starts uh, starts changing. But just make sure you're on top of the roadway. Now I would also recommend you use uh, more of these waypoints than I am just for this demonstration. That would make your curve a little smoother. But this will work for what we're going to do. Now let's go ahead and save this path. Because we're going to need to load it to use as a second path later. Now we can go ahead and we can place a car directly on this path, but it kind of limits how we can move that car or if we need to change the angle of it or something. So I usually put a dummy in between whatever I'm using with a path. So I'm going to load box one, and then I'm going to come over to the path section, pick path while I'm at frame one, and we're going to place it right there. Now we're going to have two of these boxes, and we want to set the box as a dummy. So we'll set it as a dummy so that we can use Control D to toggle the visibility on and off. And to keep them separate, I'm going to change colors on them. We have a blue path, so I'm going to make this a blue dummy. Make it where we can see it easy. And now I need to go determine where to put the end point of the path. So in order to do that, let's go to our overhead. Now we're working with uh, 1800 frames. Let's just go ahead and move all the way to the end. So now our time scrubber is all the way down here to the end. And with our box selected, and while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename that to blue box. And with our box selected, while our scrubber is at the end, we want to go back and pick the path. That'll be the end. Now we should have this box running along this path. Now in order to make this easier to see, let me go back to the box and increase its size to a thousand percent. And now you can see the box is moving along the path. But it's very, very slow. Speeding this up is easy. And what we want to do is open up our timeline and we need constraint. Now. I have the box selected and the box is constrained to the path. Right here is what we want to move at the end because we went to the end to constrain it. We want to speed it up twice as fast. Let's go to about 900 frames and you will see it moves faster. If you want it a little faster than that, you just keep moving it and you can see it moves faster. But one thing to remember is what may not seem very fast on this overhead view could be fairly fast down at the size of the car and everything else. So for right now, we'll just go ahead and leave it like that. Now let's go take a look at what that looks like and decrease our box size. Now see how much faster that looks from there? That's just one of my cameras moving around. Don't worry about that. In fact, I will go in and shut the visibility off on them. And if we wanted that to go faster, remember all we would do is grab our box, go back into our constraint, shorten it, and it'll move considerably faster. 
do a compromise there. Now that ought to work right there. Now let's go back and load the path we saved earlier. And we don't want to cross paths when we hook up here in just a few minutes. So let's move it out of the way. And let's go ahead and change it to red. So we can keep easy track of the two of them. Now we're going to need another dummy, just like we did on the other one. So I'm going to load the box. Go to path while I'm in frame one. And I am going to select the very first waypoint. Now again, I'm going to come in here and change the color of this so I can keep track of it easier to red. Just makes it easier to keep up with that way. And now we need to go to our overhead and select where on the path we're going to put our ending point. On the first one, the blue box, uh, we went ahead and we went all the way to the end of the timeline, but that was too too slow. So we're going to open up the timeline with the blue box selected, go to our constraint, and right here is where we ended up with. That places our time scrubber where we need it to be. Now we're going to go back to the red box, and I'm going to go ahead and rename this red box. And in that area without moving, we're going to go back to the path command. Pick path, and I'm going to pick the end path. And this way also I won't get it confused with the other path because I moved it out of the way. Now you can do a quick check to see that both are moving up and down the path. If you had cross hooked one of these, they would move straight across from the beginning of one path to the end of the other. And you may not even have known you had cross linked them. Now we're ready to go back and move our red path over on top of the blue path. Doesn't have to be exact, but we want these cars to trail closely to each other. So let's put them pretty close, and then we're going to alter one of these paths. And only pick one path to alter. You can alter both if you want to, but it's just simpler and quicker to alter one. We're already on the red path. Remember, you'll always have to pick Edit Path. Select one of the path uh, markers. Go to your Move or your Rotate command, in this case Move, and let's just move the path. I'm going to leave that one, and then I'm going to move this one. That way they'll kind of weave back and forth. Now in the overhead when you're working, you have to be rather careful, because you might accidentally move it off the bridge, but you can always go back and correct that later. So that's not that difficult. So we'll move this one. And we'll go ahead and move the rest of these and then leave it. Okay, now we've pretty much moved our path all we need to. And what you will see here is they will kind of just start weaving in and out. Now they do collide, but don't worry about that. These won't even be visible. We'll go back to our overhead, take a quick look. And you can see they'll split apart, go back together. That gives us the weaving motion that we need. Now we're ready to go ahead and set our cars in here. Now I just loaded the car and I'm going to use attach to place it where I need it to be. So I'm going to attach and to make sure it goes on the right one, I'm going to come over here and attach it to the blue box. Then I'm going to come back, click the Attach To button, and use Position to position it. Now we can turn it around. But this is where you're going to find a little problem we haven't discussed yet, and that's orientation. And here's another problem. Because of the way I brought it in, there was motion on it. So just right-click with, with this car selected, right-click, remove all animation. And now it's following it, but if you'll notice, it's sliding sideways. Well, we haven't actually told the box to follow the path. At least not in the proper orientation. 
This is one of the reasons I use a dummy also, because this limits your ability to turn it. So we're with the box selected, we're going to follow path, and it needs to be on the minus y axis. And then we can just rotate our car to fit the path like we want it to. We couldn't have rotated that car had we have hooked it straight to the path. Now we've got to do the same thing uh, for the other box. We always have to orient these things to follow the path. And it's follow path minus y. Uh, you could go through all these and figure out which one you needed eventually. Now let's go ahead, load the police car. And I'm going to attach it to the red box. And use position to position it. Now, yes, they're one right on top of the other. Now, don't move your box. You don't have to do that. Just move the car. And the separation that you have here will be your main point of separation most times. So if you want to be closer, you move it closer. Further, just pull it back. Now, did you notice we had the same thing happen? The way I brought it in, this thing immediately goes back to its point of origin. Once again, right-click, remove animation if that happens to you. Now, if you'll notice, we're not oriented right on the box, the red box. Oh, it's, I'm sorry, we are oriented, right? I just have the car turned a little wrong. This is one of the problems of having this car this far back from the box. We just need to kind of turn it a little more like that. You could actually move the box back. Now what we need to do is let's create us a camera. And let's go in to the squad car and select the car so you'll have something to rotate around so you won't uh, rotate off screen now this is where you would place how you want it to look your shot inside the car and when we have the camera selected we want to link that to the car and we have this now we control D to toggle off our visibility that is if we set the boxes to dummies select each box set as dummy set as dummy that allows us to toggle the visibility on and off and those, and dummies do not render now remember if you wanted to speed this up you can go back in there with both constraints and you can change that because you can also give it more separation overhead if you want to Let's move in a little closer. Because what we need to take a look at next is how to adjust speeds if you want to. You can see here how they're they're keeping up together because they're basically at the same constraint, on the same, or pretty close to the same frame. So what we're going to do, remember we're working with the boxes. Let's take the uh, red box, the police car. Go to the constraint and let's move it back. Let's shorten it and see what happens. The police car bolts ahead. Okay? If you wanted the police car to lag behind, you would lengthen it. And the police car falls behind. So, all you have to do is move one or both of these constraints, there's one on each car, and you could have a cutoff right there. Now, you're looking at it, you're not sure, you could get both timelines up for once, or you can just go back and forth between them, set where that one's at, come back to here. Now you know that is around there, and we move it over. I do wish Real Illusion would leave the marker where it's at, but that's close enough, and we should be back to a regular chase. So there's several ways 
You can maintain separation, overtake, without actually having to animate it just by changing the constraint key. And of course the distance involved would speed this up. I hope this helps.